How many times has this happened to you? You think you found the perfect parking spot, but it turns out to be right in front of a fire hydrant. Well, it doesn't have to be a problem anymore. Okay, it's summer, so... There's the one. This week, they discovered oil up by Port Asbestos, and now they're looking for a path to run the oil pipeline. See, they'll only use places where there's no risk of further environmental damage. <laughs> and we're looking real good. Uncle Red! <laughs> Spilled the coffee, did you, Harold? This is not coffee. This is oil. Oh, boy. I, I'm just spelling a whole big pool of it out front. Oh, no, no, no. That's just a little test, Harold. They, they dug a little hole, and then they put oil in there to see what would happen. And nothing happened. <laughs> this happened. Well, that was your fault, Harold, OK? Don't you blow this thing, OK? I'm making a deal with the oil company. They're going to pay us for the privilege of running the pipeline through the large property. Well, I wish I'd known so I could protest it. I could be pretty obnoxious, you know. No kidding. <laughs> Harold, listen, a harmless little pipeline running through some part of the lodge is not going to bother anybody, all right? And they're going to pay money, Harold, real money, oil money. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, some of that should be my money because I found the oil. That would make me rich. No, 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 no. You dropped in the oil. That makes you a dipstick. <laughs> for dinner for two at Chuck's Chip Wagon. At Chuck's, we have a saying, when the chips are down, they won't be for long. <laughs> okay, Mike, uh, cover your ears. Okay, Red, you've got 30 seconds to get my camera to say this word. Honor. Honor. All right, listen. And go! Okay, Mike, when you do something bad, that brings you shame. But when you do something good, that brings you... Parole. <laughs> Um, esteem. A uh, kettle. <laughs> no, no, not steam. No, not just esteem. Okay, okay, look. Uh, when you trust people to pay for things and you never check up on them, that's called the something system. The stupid system. <laughs> uh, Red, almost yeah, out of time. Yeah, okay. Mike, remember a few years ago you stole a woman's purse? That was because back then you were a man without... Money. <laughs> okay, but then later you took the purse and returned it to her because you became a man with... An empty purse. <laughs> she, she, I thought her money was in her purse, but she had it on her. There we go. As your lodge leader, uh, I have the power to actually designate someone as a lifetime charter member of the lodge. I can pick somebody who maybe has made a, a big impact on lodge life or somebody that nobody hates <laughs> or somebody who may give us money at some point in the future. <laughs> so I'd like you to sit up and show a little respect and go so far as to pretend that you're listening to tonight's recipient of this honor, Mr. Charlie Farkason. <laughs> Hi, 
my God, this is quite a surprise. <laughs> it's my first time at Possum Lodge. I finally decided to see where the smell was coming from. <laughs> I do have a family connection to this area. My mother's maiden name was Boyle, and her mother's maiden name was Payne. Well, there's my second cousin, George, who everybody said was a Boyle on my mother's side, but people who knew him well said he was more of a Payne <laughs> than a Boyle. His son, Lance, <laughs> was a little of each. George almost made the Gwinnett's Book of Record in 1937, because when he moved from Parry Sound to Possum Lake, he raised the average IQ of both places. <laughs> George decided to be a farmer when he got here because he had uh, bought a farm. And that's what they're for. <clears throat> he had two wooden legs, and I remember he used to get slivers every time he took off his pants too fast. <laughs> which he did on a regular basis. <laughs> you gotta expect a man with wooden legs to be a little naughty. <laughs> but then one night, George had a barn fire, and he was burned to the ground. <laughs> My wife and former sweetheart, Valida, and I still live in Paris, and we both owe you fellas a big thank you. Because you guys at the lodge sure make everybody in Paris Sound feel better about themselves. <laughs> but in closing, I'd like to thank you all for this honor. I'm sure I'll appreciate it a lot more in the future than I will tomorrow in the pasture. <laughs> Problem up the lodge, nothing serious. 20,000 gallons of some kind of toxic liquid mysteriously gathered at the low end of the parking lot. So the government guys come down here and they're in the process of pumping it all into these drums. They're gonna go dump it into the Hudson River or something. But there's an upside. See, they've all gone off to the hospital because one of the guys spilled some of the stuff down the front of his pants and he immediately stopped worrying about the ozone, started worrying about the fun zone. So now I'm left here with a high volume gas powered water pump and 200 feet of hose. And I'm sure you're thinking what I'm thinking. Jet boat. <laughs> Is this a great idea or what, huh? It's light, it's strong, and it's shock absorbent. Always an asset when you dock a boat the way I do. Now I sealed off the other end of the hose with the handyman's secret weapon but I want to stick some kind of removable plug in this end, because this is going to be a fishing boat, and I'm planning on using the hose as a live well. I just need to find something the right size and shape. with this boat, but I want it to be in a good way. So I need to add some kind of a cabin or a bridge to the unit. And like all the great boat builders, Thor hired all, Robinson Crusoe, Huckleberry Finn, I'm gonna make it out of the materials I have at hand. And there's my bridge. Even got a little windshield. Cleanest windshield you'll ever see. And that's how you take a bunch of leftover junk and turn it into something useful and attractive. Exact opposite of what the government does. <laughs> Remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta get up to the yacht club for the sail past. <laughs> to you older guys about watching your language. Now, I don't mean those words you use when you hit a thumb with your hammer or a tree with your hummer. <laughs> I'm talking about those times when you say things like, you know, I remember when you can get a haircut for two bucks. That just makes you sound old. <laughs> Sentences like that are basically verbal carbon dating. 
They tell the person you're talking to just exactly what kind of fossil you are. <laughs> and that ruins everything. Heck, I've seen a guy go to all the trouble of dyeing his hair black, sucking his gut in, and pretending to like rap music. <laughs> only to blow it by leaning back in his chair and going into a 10-minute monologue that starts with, back in my day... <laughs> you know, back in my day just means today is not your day and tomorrow's a long shot. <laughs> so my advice is, just keep quiet. You only have to do it for a couple more years, and by then you'll be so darn old, nobody will pay attention to anything you say. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Announcing a motion picture event of unprecedented scope and unparalleled septic significance. Winston Rothschild III, in his first dramatic role as John Toad, a poor itinerant sewage and septic sucking technician. I'll be around. Wherever you look. Wherever there's a fight where some plumber's cheating some poor guy, I'll be there. I'll be there in the way a guy reaches to raise the seat or jiggle the handle. Wherever people flush without thinking or walk through their yards without finding that soft, mushy spot or enjoy the smell of a sweet summer breeze instead of Something else. I'll be there. Coming this summer to a theater near you, The Wrath of Grace. Well, they got a lot of the pipeline in place, and I don't know what everybody's got their clams all steamed about. As far as I'm concerned, the thing's barely noticeable. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, boy. Fourth time I've done that. <laughs> That's okay. It's still funny. <laughs> oh, I got good news from the oil company. Huh? Yeah, yeah. They're not going to use the pipeline. They're going to use oil trucks instead. <laughs> what? They can't do that. Oh, well, yes, they can. And I'm glad they can. And I'm so glad they did. This pipeline was wreaking havoc with the entire area. Oh, come off it, Harold. This area was reeking long before they got here. <laughs> well, what do we do now? Well, you just take it down. That's what you do. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere. Sounds like a lodge member. <laughs> it's not like it's something fun, like a water slide or something. No! Water slide! No! It's your idea! No, no! Come on, you want it! Come on! Water slide! Come on! Oh, I'm not getting God, in the side. <laughs> Still funny. <laughs> Now, Bill and Walter were putting in a fence uh, behind the lodge. I went to see what was going on, and you know what I saw didn't didn't really please me all that much. So it's... Um, to me, don't you have to dig a hole first before you try and just drive a post right into the clay there? And then, then they went with the uh, yeah, I'm looking better. Push me, pull you, kind of a one. Oh, oh. Maybe a poor wood choice at this point. And then the Bill asked for the sledgehammer and said, here you go. And oh, well, that's unfortunate. Meanwhile, Walter had pounded the top end of that one pretty round, so I finally showed there's all you need to do, boys. And they're a little embarrassed, but that's because they hadn't had a whole lot of success. But they had a decent one about every six. So we figured it's really all you need. As long as you got three to attach it to and just the, we got the coiled fence there, and uh, they're just going to unwind that. And uh, She's got some spring to her, too, and I'm just going to staple it to the middle pole. But no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, where you go, where you go. So um, the same guys that did the poles also did the measuring, uh, which, yeah, well, you see what happened there, and just... Okay, that's not going to work, Bill. No, I think you need, you need either more fence or less... No? Okay, now we're... Yeah, okay, see, no. That's really not, no, this is not the attitude that gets us anywhere good. Um, meanwhile, I'm trying, and the thing's going zigzag, and I can't get it, and this, and of course, now it gets personal. So I figured the only way that I can stop this 
is by getting a staple in there while she's going by, and that starts the coils all going. And this is just an, I didn't even see that duck. That was a pure accident. And then these, I didn't even see these fellows coming in, and then I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, so now we're, uh, no, steady, boy, steady. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh, oh. So then I said, well, if you could roll it, just roll in the, that's not, boy, that is really hard on the ears. But, so finally they got separated a bit, and uh, I think the only way out of this mess is to sort of unroll them like a cabbage roll. So I'm thinking, I'll get Bill unrolled, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll do all of her in a minute, so. Got her going there, and I think the way we were all getting awful close to the cliff with the, with the water and everything there. And luckily we ran out of fence, and you know, we were all set, um, to go back and get Walter, and we just did one, look, one little look over the clay. Yeah, that's bad, yeah. And I mean, Walter's already heading our way, and you know, I think I think we meant to stop him, but I don't know. In the heat of the moment, you just something like, well, oh, oh, oh. Well, I got things to do. You know, throughout a man's life, you will have good days and you will have bad days. And if you're lucky enough to be married, your wife will often point out which ones are which. <laughs> but the one thing that all the bad days have in common is the element of rejection. Being denied access to the local tavern or the woman's dorm or the exit door at the police station. These are setbacks. But the biggest disappointment in a man's life has to be the day his driver's license is revoked. Happens to most of us as we get older. Maybe you can't pass the eye test or your neck won't turn around far enough for you to back up. Or maybe you've been doing 30 in the passing lane with your turn signal on since 1997. <laughs> but don't worry. Where there's a handyman, there's a way. Just because you can't drive a car doesn't mean you can't drive. So I lifted the body off of this convertible, which you need a license for, and put it onto something you don't need a license for, a riding mower. Okay, it's not as good as a real car. You can't pick up girls in it or reach the drive through window. And taking this baby onto the highway, that's pretty much a suicide attempt. But hey, at least you're not walking. Oh, sure, they can take away my license, but they can't take away my dignity. set first trial run of our pipeline water slide <laughs> we were thinking of sending a dog down there first you know it's kind of a pre-test run but then we thought no that's cruel <laughs> all right Dalton, give harold the signal harold we're good to go calm down you might want to try it head first so you don't hurt yourself <laughs> <laughs> oh here he comes What is it? Well, um, it seems I'm stuck in the pipe! <laughs> okay, okay. Don't panic, Harold. Uh, don't give me the cordless drill out of there, will you? What? Where exactly are you in there, Harold? Ow! Okay. Back a little bit. That, that's very loud, you know. Okay. What do you want the drill for? I'm gonna drill a hole in the pipe. What? Is that, is that safe? No, you're right. You better hold the chair. <laughs> Well, if you feel a drill a bit, just yell out, Harold. <laughs> Ow! What, 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 Harold, what? It's a spider. <laughs> you don't, give me that, see that coffee pot's got oil in it. Bring that over. What are you doing? Well, what we are have you doing? a, wait, Harold, we have a blockage in the pipe. We need an enema. <laughs> Your mouth shut, wiggle around a little bit. <laughs> Grab the bat, Dalton, give him a little love tap. <laughs> Time red. Yeah, you go ahead. 
ahead, Dalton. I'll be right down. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> it's meeting time. It's meeting time. Where you go? Where you go? You're good. is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and uh, don't worry, just because we got a water slide at the lodge doesn't mean I'm going to be spending more time up here. I still know where the real amusement park is. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> All rise! Quantum Omni Flunkus Moritatis. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. Okay, man, Harold here tells me that the water slide is just way too dangerous. She's pitch black inside, and there's metal shards at every seam, and she's covered with uh, oil residue on the inside. So we are going to have to tear her down, but before we do, is anybody interested in going for one last ride? Yeah. <laughs>